every single pawn matters absolutely. I always say that to my friends, to my younger students, every single little material advantage that can be capitalized on, it does matter so much. Uh, this is maybe intermediate towards advanced lesson, but that's very useful concept we need to grasp on, guys. Um, in various games, you would get to the end and hopefully you're going to get a little tiny advantage that you would be capitalizing on. Like in this uh, particular scenario here, <clears throat> you notice you've got like six white pawns versus uh, five black pawns and that matters. That little guy on F2 does do matter. Another principle we need to understand is that when you have material advantage, try to exchange the pieces because theoretically and practically at the end of all the exchanges what remains is the extra stuff so you will get into a king and pawn ending uh, preserving your advantage and not allowing your opponents to having active pieces in this particular position here black has a rook <clears throat> and that rook is quite active so Whatever you want to do, you cannot allow that rook reigning supreme. If you're messing about playing, I'm going to give now a bad example. If you just move random stuff, you will always run into all sorts of threats here and you can't allow your opponent active pieces. Therefore, if you remember that, uh, you will also remember that you have to make counter play. So this is a black rook. You've got a white rook. You better make sure that that black rook is being opposed straight away. So you're going to play rook A to D. You're opposing. Even if they take, you take back. And as we discussed, you do have an extra pawn. They take, you take, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. You got a queen, uh, sorry, you got a bishop. You're going to play. You're going to move in the uh, middle of the board with the king. You try to maintain your pawns on dark square so that they are not targetable by the bishop. And with the correct play, you should be able to capitalize at some point. Let's go for another scenario here. So what do we do? Do we trade the queens or do we do something else? Every single position has its own um, idiosyncrasies, his own particular uh situation here you could trade the queen but what's even better is if you manage to grab a pawn in the process because as we said if you create a pass pawn if you get an extra little material advantage that matters so much it makes a difference between winning or losing all right so apart from just trading queens perhaps you notice guys there is also queen to c4 <laughs> queen to c4 which checks the king and also forks attacks another black pawn on b4 and this is great because uh, uh, black needs to either move the king away or to block it with their own queen and when they do block again don't take because that's bad if you take it you're helping black to get the king closer to the middle of the action so you don't want to do that but instead grab the other guy on b4 and now you do definitely playing better here still exerting pressure on a4 you've created the passer you should be able you should be able to win here medium long term in this position but still required for you to play very carefully let's look at this position here hmm always always pay attention to your opponent's moves never ever neglect their stuff now if you uh, give it a few seconds here you'll probably notice there is something bound to happen so you need to act now you know this is this is the moment if you don't play carefully if you mess about if you rush it if you do not focus you will actually uh be trapping your own bishop because after a move like g6 the bishop can't move out even if you try to the king will just simply grab your bishop one or two moves and the bishop is gone so you better make sure that the bishop goes to safety and then again given the fact you've got one extra pawn you should be able to be winning also don't forget the king is eager to play in the center and pushing the f-pawn and very nicely uh, white is totally totally uh, more optimistic in his chances to be winning in the position so let's have a look at this one here what are we supposed to be playing with uh, white well there is a bishop look at the activity of that bishop that bishop is very active so we can't allow that to happen we need to stop it and we do have a bishop here all right, because if they take, you're going to take back with the king and you maintain quite a night nice domination in the center. Plus, you got the, this guy that's ready to marching on. And what's more importantly, if you wonder what's the key to the victory, it's this white pawn on d4. This is the key to your victory. All right. In this position here now, what do we do? Well, do you think that if you're trading the black rook is going to be a good deal for white here? 
think again because once you do that of course they will take your guy back but the black king's activity is just absolutely concerning for white here because if you take and then take i mean what if black king plays on c3 can you save the c2 absolutely not i mean you're just miles away from that c2 pawn you just can't allow that to happen so you need to understand that all right so you cannot allow uh, uh, black kings uh, uh, to moving closer to the C2, which is the base of your pawn chain. You totally shouldn't be allowed this to happen. So you go with the check, and it's absolutely fine. Okay, you need to push that guy away, and eventually just getting your guy at some point. But now you need to make sure that the king goes away. All right. So you mustn't allow the black king to play on C3, attacking C2. Okay, let's have a look at another position here. Do you really want to take well? I'm not fully convinced because if I take that one, maybe I'm helping my opponent to move their king closer to the middle of the board and I'm giving them space and I'm giving them activity and initiative. I'm not sure I want to do that. You want to go for the weaknesses. What is a potential weakness? It's the B7 black pawn, which you are able to target with a simple move like knight to C5 when you're targeting this guy. All right. They can't even say, oh, I'm going to move the pawn and stuff like that. They can't even do that because there is always a knight taken on a6 here. So that's one little idea that might be increasing your chances to winning. In this position here, what's going on? Maybe there is a tactic here. All right. Maybe there is a tactic. Is there something you could do? Maybe you have to consider sometimes a provisional temporary material sacrifice, which you will be taking back. But all in all, the pieces will be more active. Perhaps you can see the tactics, guys, with rook takes on g7. Obviously, black king had to take. And now bishop to c3. What does that result into? Sending the black king away from the action. What did you achieve? Everything. You've achieved absolutely everything here because the black king will have to take your bishop. So they're further away from action. And whether you push the pawn or I don't know if there's a better plan, that one seems absolutely fine. You will be creating the chances for your king to moving closer to action and increases the chances for you to promoting. Plus, you've got a pawn majority on the uh, king side here. So that's another element for you guys to keep in mind. All right, in this position here, looks like the white king wants to take the black knight. Where are you going to move that guy? I hope you're not going to do bullet in which you just have a few seconds to decide upon like a crucial moment like this one. Where do I get the uh, black knight? So think carefully, what are your options? Well, I think we can completely discard knight to c2. It's just can't be uh, considered. Also, you can discard knight to d3. You're not going to play that one either. Uh, You've got left now only two choices, knight g2 and knight e3. There's a major, major uh, f3. There's a major difference in between those two. If you look at the knight on g2, and if I am to <clears throat> asking you now, what would you do if white actually will be trapping your knight? I mean, I understand you attack the bishop and you attack the pawn, but what if, let's say, the bishop goes on to g5? where would you move your knight from that point onwards specifically if the uh, uh white king will be targeting your uh knight so if the knight is trapped over there you better look for another way to be playing the knight and perhaps you want to explore the f3 which is absolutely fine now you do attack here all right and uh that's fine you should be you should be able to be winning this position because you got a pawn majority here and it's absolutely fine and if they play you could just very well take and take so you've got a pass pawn and you should be able to win because the white king i think we've done a previous lesson about a pass pawn the white king will never be able to target your guy here so let's just assume in whatever future you may want the king can't take this guy without losing sight of the other pawn which will be marching and promoting Okay, so that's just not considering the Black King's activity. But if you throw in the Black King's activity, you're definitely going to be getting a clearer picture about how to win. So, guys, that was the converting the material advantage. Remember, the key element, the key here is you've got the extra material being that a single little pawn. Um, try to exchange the pieces, simplify the game so that at the end of it all, you will be retaining that particular advantage. So don't be afraid to get the king and pawn endgame if you got that extra pawn that you could be capitalizing on. All right. So thanks for watching the video, guys. Subscribe, share it with your friends, family, and um, 
colleagues and i'll see you guys either on my live streams or on the next youtube video thank you